is Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create uh, some photo requests which we are going to turn into a modern pair of earrings. So to begin with you're going to need some sort of turquoise clay. I'm using Primo Turquoise and I'm using two blocks from a two ounce bar, bar like this. And now you don't want these to be conditioned. It's important that they aren't conditioned because it means that uh, when we cut out our turquoise chips they're going to have nice sharp edges and the older the clay is generally the better uh, if it's very soft you might have a little bit of trouble another trick that you can do if your clay is too soft is you can put it into the freezer for a good hour to um, you know make it quite a bit firmer and then cut like that that uh, works pretty well for me sometimes but you'll just start by cutting out like so and just continue cutting like so until you have a bunch of small pieces now they don't all have to be the same size you just want them all to be at least half a centimeter half a centimeter uh, or smaller roughly anyway okay so I've got a pile of turquoise here and uh, don't squish it together or anything like that, just have it in a loose pile. And then I want you to bring over a nice large plastic Ziploc bag. And I might actually see if I can get a smaller one so that it's easier to work with on camera. Here we go, this will work. And I want you to take some black acrylic paint. This is the one that I am using. Okay. And this being and by doing this technique uh, you are using more paint than you would if you just uh, rub the paint uh, into the clay on the tile but at the same time it means that you don't have to worry about gloves you don't have to worry about making a huge mess just dump some paint into the bag like so take a scoop of the turquoise like so dump some more paint onto that turquoise and take the rest of your turquoise just place that inside and then just for a good measure I like to generally put just a little bit more paint in Okay. And then make sure to trap as much air as you can when you're zipping this close so I like to actually blow on it and then zip it close so give me a moment like so and then I want you to shake that around and you can see that's going to coat it. You'll also coat the bag, but you can see how much mess this is saving you. Okay, and then when you're done, what I will do is I will generally just open up a small amount, squeeze out a good amount of that air, and I'll direct it all into one corner. Uh, the clay in the bag anyway okay. and I'm just going to open up a little space here so I've got it all at the bottom here and all I'll do is I'll bunch it together here and that's not going to be in the shape of a nice neat cane but it does mean that you don't have to worry about getting paint all over your fingers and so you can press really nice and hard to get this into shape so that all of those pieces sit together and so that any excess paint kind of gets squeezed out. So just work on that. Okay. And then once you're happy that it's kind of been bunched all together, you can then just lob that out like so. And now this you will probably throw away, unless you do want to use it again for another turquoise project. Uh, and then as for this, all I would do is I'll give that at least an hour or two before you even touch it uh, and then we can try moulding it into another shape but generally I actually leave it overnight uh, to dry to make sure that all of those veins are nice and cured but I will leave it for two hours and then we'll come back and we'll see how it's doing okay so it's been about half an hour and I think I want to try to uh, mould this into a square before I let it dry any further so what I will generally do is I will take square pieces of wood 
and there's two reasons for this first off because they can get messy I don't mind it and also because the clay doesn't typically stick to the wood at least not very easily whereas something like acrylic it definitely can stick to so I just like to gently mold that into a uh, square-ish shape or a rectangular shape and if the clay starts to break apart when you do this uh, it means that you didn't press the pieces together properly while it was still in the bag so if that happens then I want you to take it back to the bag and I want you to start pressing it together again properly because it shouldn't fall apart when you're doing this you're definitely going to have some leakage from the paint as you can see here uh, but you shouldn't have pieces falling off or it trying to break apart okay so I've almost got it into a shape that I'm happy with you can see there so it's not a perfect square that's fine I'm pretty happy with it now that it's in that shape I'm happy to let that dry for at least two hours uh, because once it has dried it can become a little um, difficult to mold because the clay being that it hasn't conditioned hasn't been conditioned uh, will stiffen up quite a bit and so you do want to try and mold it into the correct shape if you can so anyway, I'm going to leave that for two hours and then we can slice it okay so I've left this for about two hours now if you want it to be completely dry I'd recommend leaving it overnight um, or for at least 24 hours but because we're going to be uh, taking slices putting it into a veneer and then sanding it we don't need to worry about smears but just bear in mind that if you don't leave it for at least 24 hours you're going to definitely get paint smears so I've got a nice sharp blade here the sharper it is the better when it comes to this and I'm going to take a first slice and now you can see that there are some smears there but so long as it holds together it's fine and now each time you take a slice clean your blade because there's going to be paint on it each time because uh, the paint inside of the cane is still wet and so you don't want that paint dragging onto the next slice and then take as many slices as you can try to keep them all roughly the same thickness and just continue until you've basically used up your whole cane and that's how it looks so now I've got a bunch of pieces of turquoise and you can see that we have a bunch of little smudges but that's fine we can very easily clean that up later on now what I'd recommend doing before uh, moving on to the next step is actually allowing these pieces to rest for another hour or so uh, if you have a hair dryer you could also come in and start drying the paint on the surface if you wanted to uh, if not then you can just let them dry for another hour and because they're thin slices uh, the paint inside of those grooves should, should dry which is something that I want uh, before we try uh, burnishing the pieces together because you'll find that the paint will smudge quite a bit it will stick to the paper if it's not dry okay so they're basically finished drying so I just want to take them and put the slices onto a piece of uh, printing paper just plain regular printing paper off to the side and I want to just quickly clean up um, any paint that has been left over alright so now I have uh, these two cutters this is the second largest uh, narrow arch cutter uh, in my arch cutter set and this is my small circle cutter in my circle cutter set and so a turquoise is going to be this arch over here and then we're going to have uh, some textured black as the circle so what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, take these, we're going to leave them um, and we're going to take some uh, souffle black and now you can use any black clay you want. I like to use the souffle because it has a nice little texture on it and it means that we really don't have to do any sanding. Uh, but if you don't have souffle, Prima black, Kato black, even uh, Cernet black will work. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to condition a sheet and I'm going to roll it out to at least one millimeter thick. Okay, now because of how thick our turquoise is, I'm actually going to take this down to about half a millimeter thick. 
So I don't want it to be um, too thick. I don't want our earrings to be too thick. So now I'll take that, place it down like so. Put that to the side and I want you to take each slice of your um, turquoise. And this is optional but I find that it tidies it up if you actually cut these edges. I find that you don't get as much of a uh, seam look and also you get more of a square instead of kind of a roundish square effect and then the pieces will sit together better. So just trim away uh, those edges. Okay, so now we can bring over our black again and I'm just going to take this uh, cutter and I'm just going to make a mark here and a mark there. And this will just give me a good idea of uh, how much space I need to cover to get uh, to get. Sorry, I have um, words escape me for some reason. To be able to cut out two pieces, okay, and you can see they fit together much better now. And although it does end up wasting a little bit of clay, uh, it means that you're going to get a lot less distortion when you flatten this out. Uh, and the general um, look is going to be much better. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to take another piece of printing paper, place this over the top, and I'm just going to begin to burnish thoroughly. Okay, and this is just going to smooth our pieces together, make sure that there's no uh, seams. It's going to make sure that they're all the same thickness. I might even roll a little bit with my roller. I don't like to do this too much because I don't like to distort it. Uh, but I do do this to uh, get it to be roughly the same uh, thickness. And then just continue burnishing with your fingers. And just continue until it feels level to you. Okay, that feels about right. Now I'm going to lift that up. And you can see that we did have a little bit of paint, but not too much. We might actually just go back over and just use the paper to soak up any leftover wet parts. Okay. Then I'm just going to cut off this excess and we'll remove that. And then I do want to run this through my pasta machine on my thicker setting to make sure that it is all the same thickness. So before I do that, I'm just going to use my roller very quickly to flatten it out again. And because it's turquoise, it can deal with a little bit of distortion. I try to avoid as much as possible, but uh, you can work with it a bit. Then I'm going to put that through on my thickest setting. And you can see it did stretch it a bit, but not too much. Now I'll come back with a piece of paper and I'll just burnish it again just to make sure that we get a nice clean finish. I'll soak up any uh, leftover paint and it will also burnish up, also uh, burnish up the back. I'll just flip the piece and make sure that the back's nice and clean as well because we only want to do one bake. that should be good. Lift this up. And now because it is turquoise, uh, fur turquoise anyway, you're going to always have little spots uh, that haven't been filled in and that's fine. And you can see here that we're going to be able to fit probably uh, two pairs of earrings actually. I'll grab this, press down and lift up. And it will stick in the cutter because it's on a piece of paper and the paper does not stick to the clay. I have a piece of printing paper off to the side where you will put that 
and that's what you will bake on. So I'll show you that in a moment. Right now I want to try and get out another pair of earrings and we should be able to. And there we are. And now we are going to need to sand to clean this up but that's fine. It's really only surface level sanding so it's not going to be too much. Okay. And here we go. Now just to make sure that this sits flat I will just use the paper that we cut out from and I'll very gently burnish. Do not burnish hard, you just want to gently lay them down onto uh, the plain printing paper and this will get rid of any fingerprints that you might have caused uh, taking them out of the cutter. There we go. And you'll just leave those to the side and we can clean them up after they've been baked. So now our next step is going to be to create our uh, little circles. And this is really easy. All you need is a piece of the souffle black rolled out on your thicker setting. Place that onto a piece of paper. Yes, we use a lot of plain printing paper because burnishing out roller lines and getting a nice smooth finish while it is raw means that there's very little sanding to do. All I'm going to do is just burnish thoroughly and this will smooth out the back and it will smooth out the front. Okay, and then I want you to bring over something that's going to give it a really nice coarse texture. Okay, and I'm just going to use this aquarium filter sponge. Uh, coarse sandpaper will work as well. And just roll across the surface like so. And that will give you a decent texture. Okay. And I'm just going to take this circle cutter. I'm going to cut out one, two, I want to cut out four. And notice how it's sticking to the paper. And the reason for that is because we burnished it really well onto the paper. And so if you do burnish it well enough onto the paper, it will actually stick. And so I'm actually going to leave them just there, the way they are. And then we're going to be putting uh, those and these turquoise pieces into the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And then when they're done, we can clean up the edges where you see there's a little bit of... Um, Itching that needs to be cleaned away and we can do any sanding that needs to be done. Okay and now they're out of the oven so now you're going to just let them cool or you can put them in some cold water to cool. You can see as these come off uh, they leave a lot of the residue behind. Okay and so first what I want to do is I just want to cool these off because if you uh, don't cool them quickly or place them under a tile of some sort they can end up curling a bit so just dipping them in some water can prevent that so I'll just dip these both quickly in there we are and I wouldn't worry about these ones uh, because they're circles and they're very small so they don't curve now I am just going to use a cloth knife so that we can clean up those edges because I don't want to be sanding the edges. Uh, and there's just a little bit of uh, residue and that should come off very easily. There you can see just by scraping my blade along the edge. And this is not a very sharp blade. Uh, it should just come straight off like so. And I would just do that with um, all of the rounds. And as for the turquoise ones, uh, I would leave those since we're going to be doing a bit of sanding with those. But here you can see the backs are quite nice and the fronts are nice. Okay, yeah. and these are done now. So we'll put those to the side. And now we're going to start working on these. So let's start with this one. You can see that we have the edges over here. And so you can either sand those or you can just use your blade to just quickly trim them. And because it's not a round, it's very uh, easy to trim. So you just work your blade around it and trim it very easily. There we go. Then I want you to be working with wet uh, sandpaper. And I'm going to start with a 400 grit, oh, excuse me, a 800 grit. 
because um, these are pretty smooth already I just want to be uh, removing that paint so if you want you can start at a um, 400 400 is a good grit uh, but generally 800 will do the trick I generally start with 800 then I work my way up to a uh, 1200 grit and then we will move on to polishing papers to make it nice and uh, neat. Okay, so just continue sanding until you are happy that you have removed the paint. So I'll just continue doing that for a moment and then I'll show you what it looks like because it's a little hard to see when it's all cloudy like this. Let me just dip that in the water. And there you can see how much cleaner that is. I do need to sand up these edges. Uh, but over here where you can see some scrape marks but you can see there how much cleaner it is so do that with all of them and then we can move on to the next step okay and here they are out now that I have sanded them you can see those are going to look quite nice so uh, you have two options here uh, you can either leave these as they are they're going to be quite matte. I would recommend taking them up one or two more grits uh, but basically I do want to leave them matte. If you don't want them to uh, remain matte then continue sanding through the polishing papers that I'm going to show you. Uh, so let's move on to that. I've got polishing papers here. We're going to skip the first two grits because that's a 400 and 600. We're going to start with the blue and we're going to work our way up until the uh, pink. And now I might go up one more grip from the pink, we'll see. But if it starts to have a shine to it, I am probably going to stop. I want it to have a light satin finish. I don't want it to have a gloss finish. If you want a gloss finish, by all means go for it. Uh, but I am inclined to go for a satin finish this time around. Of course, if you want to check out what the gloss finish looks like, you can always uh, go all the way up to the finishing grit. Uh, and then if you don't like it, you can take it down to uh, the uh, lower grits and that will restore it back to its um, matte finish. So I can see that I'm getting a very light gloss on this. Not much. If I direct that, you shouldn't be able to see really any shine which is what I want uh, so I might actually go up to the finishing grit and just skip buffing because buffing really takes up to a very high gloss finish which is something I don't want so I'm going to continue going up and when I'm done I'll tell you what grit I went up to okay so I went all the way up to the final grit and so you can see it does have a little bit of a flash to it when you direct it to the light but this is essentially a kind of satin finish. Now, I am curious to see what it looks like when it's shiny. And since we do have uh, two pairs here, I'm going to take a little bit of Renaissance wax. And then we we'll put those to the side. And I'm just going to spread on a thin layer of the wax. onto these two pieces and first I am going to uh, hand buff because this is going to give me a lighter finish than the buffing wheel would and so it will give me an idea of whether I like it or not so you want a nice soft rag grab that nice soft rag and just buff like so go backwards and forwards as fast as you can the faster you go the e better the buff will be And there you can see how that's looking. Now I think I want to try the buffing oil because it looks pretty good like it is. Uh, but I want to try what the buffing oil looks like. So I'm using a Dremel 3000 with a buffing wheel. And I actually quite like that. You can see how that now has a flash to it. So I think I'm actually going to make them all like that. 
And now just to clean up the backs, you can give it a quick buff as well. Okay, and that will generally get rid of uh, any stuff on them, as you can see. Okay, and so I'm going to just repeat with all of them. Okay, and so they all should have this lovely shine to them. Now you can see how I change my mind uh, throughout projects. So don't be afraid to change your mind. Sometimes uh, things are meant to go one way rather than what you think they're supposed to do. So now, now we are going to get on to drilling. So I've got this push drill. You can use a pin drill as well. And I want you to just center that. Like so. Just begin drilling. Okay. And this will give you a nice, neat hole through which to put your jump ring. Then choose a black piece. And now you can either use these black piece, leave these black pieces matte. Or you can use your buffing wheel with the excess wax on it to give them a light shine. Like so. And if I show you the difference there, hopefully you can see that one has a little bit more of a shine than the other. This being the one with the shine. Hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just position on one end and drill like so yeah. and then for the next part if you want to get it perfectly right what you can do is you can grab a ruler so let me just grab a nice metal ruler and you can just Position that onto the ruler, and that will give you a good idea of where you're supposed to drill your next hole. There we go. Just getting rid of that stuff. So now that's basically what you'll do for each piece and then to assemble them you're going to need some pliers, uh, some earring wires and of course at least two jump rings per pair. Okay so just go take those and you'll open them up. And now you might need to try one or two different jump rings to make sure uh, to find one that's going to fit nicely. Uh, but this one fits pretty well. And it really varies uh, per uh, earring, or not per earring, but uh, per project, because it really depends on the thickness of your piece and the width, um, the uh, distance from the edge of the piece to where your hole is. So. Just bear that in mind. Now because I don't like to use too many um, jump rings, I will now take this and I'm going to twist it like so. And then I'll put it on. Okay. And there we go, that is your earring. So now I'm going to go and repeat that with the other three. There we go, they're all finished. So you can see, really simple and easy to pull off. And yes, there is some sanding, and I know that you don't like sanding, but it's very minimal. And it definitely does give uh, the best result, as you can see. 
So anyway, that's basically it for today's tutorial. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please do let me know in the comments below. And keep in mind that you can use the turquoise technique for many different things other than just uh, earrings like these. Uh, but I thought that they paired well with the shape and the colours. So again, if you enjoyed it or have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to support this channel so I can continue producing tutorials every single week, please do consider becoming a patron or possibly purchasing some of the supplies that I show in my videos uh, at my Etsy shop. I have a link to both of those sites in the description below the video. Uh, and if you could check one of those out, that would be super helpful to me. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.